Okay, in this tutorial, um, we're just going to look over a simple two-dimensional collision problem. Uh, I'm going to show you how the you can how you can solve these problems, and then you can follow this procedure for all the rest of the problems. They're identical, um, whether the elastic or inelastic. You just follow the same sort of procedure every single time, and everything should work out for you. Okay, so the very first question uh, on your uh, 2D collision problem set says that there's a four kilogram ball rolling to the right at 15 centimeters per second and it's towards a stationary ball. So just going to always draw the situation so there's a ball moving. Okay, and it's moving at, it says here, uh, 15 centimeters per second and it has a mass of four kilograms and it's going to glancingly collide with a stationary object. It has a mass of two kilograms. Okay, I always like to do this and just say I understand that this is the before situation. Okay, now afterwards it says the collision is elastic and glancing causing the four kilogram ball to move at 10 centimeters per second at an angle of 30. I'll just assume it's moving up. 30 degrees is a pretty shallow angle. So I label it. 30 degrees and it's 10 centimeters per second. And this is still the four kilogram ball. Okay, now for the next one. Now the second one, it says determine the speed and direction of the second ball. Okay, so for this next one here, we don't know what the ball is doing. We're trying to find out what uh, V two F vector is. Now, since all the momentum is to the right, you can assume that probably if they collide, this ball is going to be moving to the right. And since there's no vertical momentum in the y direction, or so the y direction momentum, there's none. This ball was moving this way, this one wasn't moving. Then you know that this ball is going to probably be pointing after the collision in this direction, right? We, we probably can see that because there's only momentum in that positive direction here. And there is uh, no vertical momentum, which means that this momentum and the downward momentum must balance to give you zero Y momentum. Okay. So you can kind of just think about the problem and kind of get the idea of what the solution should look like. All right. So we got before and after. Now, what we know is we're just going to break these into components and I'm going to do this fast and you're going to do the same procedure every single time. It's, it's fast, it's easy and it's to the point. So we go, we know that the momentum in the X direction must be conserved. So we know that M1 V1 X I plus M2 V2 X I equals afterwards. So it's M1 V1 X F plus M2 V2 X F. Okay, so we just write the components in the uh, x direction. I like to, at this point, I might as well start putting in numbers. Um, so the first one is, uh, well, even before I put in the numbers, I can do one more step. M1 V1 I cosine of theta 1 plus M2 V2 I cosine of theta 2 equals m1 v1 f cosine of and then we've got this new angle up there um, i'll call this theta 3 plus m2 v2 f cosine of theta 4. now you might be like oh my gosh why are there so many thetas and um is there a faster way to do this well there is a faster way to do this but you could just start put, putting in numbers right because a lot of these are to zero um for the most part so this just gets us our x component of the momentum that's all that th that cosine of theta does it gets us the x component so for the first one it's four kilogram mass it's moving at 15 centimeters per second cosine of well it's zero degrees there's no angle and it's easy because cosine of zero is one this next one is two times zero cosine of zero 
and the whole thing just becomes because you get multiplied by zero the whole thing just becomes zero so it's easy right so you're like oh okay well that whole term could have just easily dropped to zero right at the beginning and then we've got four uh times 10 cosine of 30 plus and then it's two we don't know v2f and we don't know the angle. i'm just going to call it theta now because i've gotten rid of all of the you know i can leave it at cosine theta four but at this point there's no more angles uh no more thetas so i'm just going to leave it as a, just a straight uh, theta because that's what we're going to end up solving for all right, then we just go uh, and we look here and we say, well, we've got four times 15, like that. And we're not gonna worry so much about the units because we know that this is in centimeters per second and we know that that's in kilograms. So it's not, these aren't proper, uh, these are gonna be kilograms, centimeters per second, um, which is a, you know, a measure of momentum. Four times 15 and cosine of zero is one. So it's 60 and that part is zero, so it's 60 equals now we've got cosine of 30 times 40 because 4 times 10 is 40 so that's 34.64102 um, approximately plus and then we've got 2v2f cosine of theta okay i'm just gonna get v2f cos theta by itself v2f cos theta. And how we do that is we take 60, subtract 34.6, and then divide by 2. 60, subtract 34.64102, divided by 2 is approximately 12.67949. Try and keep as many decimal places as you can. I may have dropped a couple here, but so that's our first equation. We don't know V2F and we don't know the angle, so we can't. We have to stop there. Well, what we need then is, of course, just our Y direction. So we just start to figure out what the Y direction is. Same thing as before. M1, V1, Y, I plus M2, V2, Y, I equals M1, V1, Y, F plus M2, V2, Y, F. And then we can look at it in terms of the components again, V1 I sine theta one plus M2 V2 I sine theta two, obviously sine because we're getting the vertical component. M1 V1 F um, sine theta three. V2F sine theta four. Okay, now one thing I forgot to point out is that we're making this positive and this positive. Okay, so now we've got, uh, it's, it's a lot of subscripts I understand, I get it. It's probably irritating at times, but four times 10, sorry, initially it's four times 15 sine of zero plus two times zero sine of zero equals four times 10 sine of, now I'm gonna use positive 30, and then the next one is M2 V2. Oh wait, that's, what was M2? So that's two V2 F, and I'm just gonna put sine theta again like that. And the reason I'm doing that is because I realize that there's it's the only theta left. Sine of zero, zero. So this whole term drops to zero. This whole term drops to zero. And then you basically just have that zero equals, because there was no momentum in the y direction, 40 times 30 sine is 20. Oh yeah, 30 sine is a half times 40 is 20. Plus two V2F sine theta. Now we bring this over, so it's negative 20 divided by two is negative 10. 
So negative 10 equals V to F sine theta. And there we go. Now you've got two equations, two unknowns. You can now solve it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say from one, and you're going to see every solution is exactly the same. You just do this. You just write it out exactly the same, and then just plug in the numbers as you get them. Right? There's no, um, there's, it's just literally exactly the same thing. You just write these steps, and then just plug in the numbers that exist, and making sure that you put in positive and negatives for the angles, whether it's up or down. Okay, and that's that's pretty important. Where if the angle is going up, make it positive, and if the angle is down, make it negative. And then the sine will take care of the uh, the plus and minus because sine of positive 30 is 0.5. Sine of negative 30 is negative 0.5. So that takes into account the directionality. Cosine doesn't matter, right? Um, cosine of 180 is negative, uh, negative 1. And so that will come into play um, a bit later on. So from 1, we're just going to isolate for V um, to F. And it's 12.5. Six seven nine four nine divided by cosine of theta, and we're going to sub into two. And so what that looks like is negative ten equals, and then v two f becomes twelve point six seven nine four nine over cosine of theta times sine of theta. Then notice here of v two f right there is just what we solve for. All right. So sine over cos is tan. And then here we have negative 10 divided by is negative 0 0.788675. And then we just do the inverse tan. And our angle becomes negative 38.3 degrees. OK, so now we know the angle. And it's negative because we, as we rightly assumed before, it's down. And so the positive and negatives for the angles is crucial. I can't. I don't know, I could sit here all day and just tell you, put in the right sign. If it's up, make it positive 30. If it's down, make it negative 30. And that will alleviate a lot of your issues. Um, if it's moving to the left, use negative, or sorry, use 180 degrees um, initially, and that will help you with the signs. So you got to look at the question and solve it accordingly. Now what we're going to do is at this angle, we're just going to substitute it in uh, right here. So we'll just take this, and if you look at my other solutions, they're all identical because it's exactly the same procedure every single time. So V2F just becomes 12.67949 divided by cosine of negative 38.3. But the cosine of negative 38.3 is this the same thing as cosine of 38.3. It's an even function, right? So you're going to start making use of that stuff you learned in functions class. Divided by and we get 16.2. So therefore, V2F vector is 16.2 centimeters per second at an angle of negative 38.3. And that is our final solution. OK, uh, give the rest a try. Uh, I'm going to post solutions for numbers 1, 3, and 4. And you can check your solutions just to make sure they're, they're correct. And uh, good luck with the rest of the questions. If you have any uh, questions, send me an email.